Okay. All right, great. Um, so let's run through this real fast. Um, a couple of things we did last week. Um, we're able to um, look at the different kinds of cloud, um, I mean, types of um, identity in the in Office 365. And one of those identity, we talked about the cloud identity when it where it is just um, all the users are created on Office 365. And then we talked again about um, the hybrid identity because those are the two types. And then the hybrid identity, we talk about um, when um, when users are, um, are synced to the cloud, a kind of hybrid, you have the same user on premise also appear as an identity in the cloud. Before then, we talked. I can't hear Jumoka, is it just me? It's not just you. I can't hear her either. Yeah, Jumoka, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. She's actually out. I think it's network. Maybe she'll dial back in. Yeah, apologies for that. I had to add some glitches with my internet. Can you guys hear me, please? Yeah, I can. Okay, great. Can I hear you now? Yes, all right, great. So as I was saying, um, we looked at last week um, um, Azure Active Directory has an identity. Um, provider would look at um, your on-premise Active Directory domain services, or mostly referred to as um, ADDS, as an identity provider. And then we do a comparison. We did a comparison between the two, the difference between the two. And then, um, like I said, we move on to the identity models, which are the cloud only identity. And then we looked at the vices, the hybrid identity where we spoke about the cloud identity has been you creating your users only on Office 365. Um, the users are cloud only and we did um, a comparison. We put, we did, how do you know when a user is cloud only user? And then I took you through that when you look at the sync status, can you see my screen that I'm sharing? Now, when you look at the six, the yeah. sync status of that user, when it is cloud only, you find out that it is always in the cloud. So this says that the user is cloud only. And then we looked also at the difference when you have um, a synchronized identity, which means the user exists both on premise and in the cloud. And we took a comparison of that. And I also showed you that, that if you want to know what that looks like, this is another example, and then um, just so then this is another example that I had to show um, my users again. Just go on. 
look at the sync status. And I said that when you look at the ones that are synchronized from on-premise, where do we, these are hybrid identity. Hybrid identity, you will find it in a square this way. This makes you know that, oh, this identity is synchronized from on-premise, why this is um, in the cloud. So I think I went through that with you guys. And one of the other things I spoke to you was um, under the hybrid identity, the different authentication method you have, where you have the manage and the unmanage um, authentication method, and then you have the federated. So we looked at that, the difference in all of those. So today we're going to continue. Um, again, um, to set everything in perspective and for us to be, to be able to prepare for today, because a lot of the tasks we did last week, um, we there's a dependency of today's stacks on it so what i did again was to show you how to sign up for a free azure credit and then to set up your your domain controller to spin up a vm um, as infrastructure as a services on azure um spin it up and then populate that i mean sorry and then um promote that VM to a domain controller. So that seems to be our on-premise environment. So this is my own environment. I guess a lot of the things that I showed you how to select your disk, mostly mostly very important when you are running a virtual environment so that you can manage your credits and all of that. So I guess um, we'll continue from that. So to this week, I'm going to start up with um, talking about um the topic um hybrid identity and directory synchronization for microsoft 365 like i said what we plan to do today is that yes we look at the cloud the different kinds of identity that we have or cloud identity is straightforward you can understand it um but now let's delve deep into the hybrid identity and then look at how we can synchronize um, users from our on-premise Active Directory to Office 365. One of the key things we're trying to do here is that we're saying that if a user exists on-premise, are we going to say that that same user um, we have to remember two passwords or two identity or two credentials for him to be able to log in? And we said one of the ways we can achieve that is to have AD Connect in place, whereas, where, 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 I mean, whereby you have that user identity synchronized to Office 365. So the agenda for today will be what is Microsoft Hybrid Identity, the authentication method in hybrid identity. This actually the first two, I looked at that last week, but I don't mind. I will put you guys through it again. Then um, even though we briefly spoke on these things last week, password synchronization under the different kinds of um, authentication you can have under hybrid identity, pass through, and then federated identity. Then now we're going to introduce our Azure AD Connect and see how we can synchronize those users we have on premise to the cloud. So that would be our task for today. So what is Microsoft Hybrid Identity? It's actually a solution that covers and enables synchronized management with your on-premise and cloud environment. So simply said, it's like you want to do what you want to be able to manage a single identity or a single identity platform for both users on-premise and in the cloud. So you have, like I said, you have a situation where you do not want, you want to simplify the experience for your user. You do not want your users to be able to do what, have one, um, um, identity or credentials that it supplies when it's assessing things on-premise. And when it comes to the cloud, it has to remember another um, credential. So what it does is it creates a common user identity for authentication and authorization to all resources, regardless of the location. Remember what I said, I said, what an identity provider. So identity, like we described last week, talks about anything that does what that allows you to authenticate to assess a resource by the use of what a username and password and then we said for every of those transaction or every of those activity you carry out within for an authentication there is actually an identity provider that is going to 
authenticate or approve the authentication and then give you what authorization. Now we talked about an identity provider, e.g. like our domain controller or premise as doing three major things. An identity provider will be responsible, like we said last week, will be responsible for an authentication. We do what is called an authorization. And lastly, we do what is called an auditing. So you have like the three A's of an identity provider that you should bear in mind. So um, moving on to what the hybrid identity is, so you can see here that you have your Windows Server Active Directory. Your Windows Server Active Directory, which we talked about last week, is the identity provider that you have for your on-premise environment. And then what, authentic what controls that identity is a server that you spin up that is referred to as the domain controller on the network. Now, remember what I said last week, directory, Active Directory, look at it from the concept of directory. If you have a phone directory, definitely your phone directory will include what your username, your, I mean, will include your name, your, your address, your phone number, your city, your state. So you look at the Active Directory also as that database that hold all the information of every object on your network. When I mean object, I'm referring to users object, I'm referring to computer objects, I'm referring to printers, I'm referring to anything that needs a form of authentication on the network or that needs a form of identity, so to say, on the network. So you have your Active Directory here, which is your on-premise, and then you have Microsoft Azure Active Directory. So you look at the cloud here, you know, um, this is actually, a, um, this icon is actually for an, um, um, an Azure, uh, what they call it, AD Connect. So you look at the Azure you have, this is your public cloud. So how do you allow the flow of one single or, you know, you want to identify, I mean, you sit on your own premise and this is Azure Active Directory, sorry, and then you have all of this SaaS application and then your users are here, you have also applications also on premise and then users are allowed to say, maybe they want to access this and access this. So the user is actually in the middle of this, is, 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 um, is introduced to these two directories. You have one year, you have one year then how does it assess each of those resources, both in the cloud and Office 365, I mean on, I mean on on-premise, without having to um, put in two different password. And that takes us to the authentication method. Like I said, you have the cloud authentication, which only applies to cloud only. So Azure AD does what and does all the user signing process. And then it is seamless because you can also have, actually have a single sign on to all cloud solutions, cloud output having to render or remember your credentials. So if I have a single sign on enable for myself in cloud, I mean Office 365, um, I can have a single sign on for all my cloud app, you know. So, but when you talk about, um, let me see if I can quickly um, look at that because um, I just want to, let me see if I can give you some, if I can give you some, um, some background to why we came up with um, with um, having the cloud authentication and all of that because of last week. Uh, so, okay, just one minute, please. Just want to allow you guys to have a form of um, it will help you because for some of you that were not here, and I hope some of you even remember what we dealt with last week. Um, okay, all right. So to some of you that were not here, hold on. OK. 
Okay. All right. So I'm trying to look for the, the slide for last week so I can show you, but just bear in mind because I can see that now. Now, there are two types of hybrid identity, and then I'll manage as, as I mean, I'll try as much as possible to explain those two types um, of here yeah, right now. So you have what is referred to as manage identity, manage hybrid identity, and then you have the unmanage. Now, for the manage identity, you have these two, Azure AD password as synchronization as the authentication method, and then the Azure AD password authentication. So these are the two authentication methods you have under the manage identity. Now, the on manage identity, you have just the federated authentication. So we'll go into this, so bear that in mind. Um, bear that in mind that you have these two types of um, you have two types of authentication when it comes to hybrid identity. So now the very first one, which is the manage identity, has these two authentication method there, which is the Azure AD password as synchronization. So what happens here is that your Azure AD Connect, remember what we said the last time, AD Connect is like a tool that does what? That does that synchronization between your on-premise identity and the cloud. Now, the Azure AD password hash synchronization is a method that synchronizes the hash of the hash of a user's password from an on-premise Active Directory instance to the cloud base. So, which means that it just takes a copy of what the hash of the hash of your password and store it in what in Azure AD. So it picks that from your on-premise to make controller and store it in Azure AD. So what happens is this, when a user wants to sign in, um, Azure AD receives that information and then looks at, okay, the password, yes, I have this UPN, which is always the email address. You know, we talk about the UPS right now. UPN is what you use in signing in which is a user principal name. Um, so in my own case is olajumoke at winters.com.ng. Then I supply the password when I'm signing into my Office 365. Now, when I impute that password, if it is an Azure,
Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening to May One. May One is the one doing all of this to me today. I don't know. It's been terrible. So, um, I and I said, I hope I wasn't talking to myself. So please tell me what last um, did you, what, what did you guys um, hear me say last? You were trying to explain to us about the Azure AD Connect and the hash um, password syncing to the AD on-prem. Okay, all right. So that means you guys didn't get me, we didn't get my explanation on the pass-through authentication, right? Yes. Oh, okay, so sorry about that. So let me just repeat myself. So like I said, um, the Azure AD password, as we got that, which means that Azure AD holds um, the hash of your password, so validation of your credentials or your authentication process is done actually with Azure AD. Now for the pass-through authentication, it allows the validation of your, um, it's, this provides a simple password validation for Azure AD authentication services by using a software agent that runs on more of your on-premise server. So what it does is that um, as against what you have with PHS, so I'm going to call it short. When you hear the word PHS, I'm talking about password hash synchronization. And when you hear the word PH, PHA, I'm talking about the pass-through authentication. So bear that in mind. So when you look at the PHA method, what you have is that you use Oh, sugar, what's this again? Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. I want to see if I can. I want to see if I can. Um, I can go to my data because this is becoming how will I put it? Um, so, um, but before that, let me just continue. So with the pass-through authentication, what you have is that, um, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you.
Okay, sorry. Hello, Sarah, are you the one? Yeah, I'm here. It seems to be, it seems to be the only one with me today. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I've just loaded my, just changed to my data. It's actually terrible. Okay. Um, Okay. All right, great. So thank you. Um, so moving on, uh, let's talk about it. So the pass-through authentication, like I said, the pass-through authentication, we allow you to do what? We validate that credential or the password that you supply through what your on-premise server. So it will always have to come to your on-premise domain controller to do what? To do the validation of that Olajumo care at um, um, the password that I supplied against that Olajumo care at winters.com.ng. So it's al al always going to come to your my on-premise server to do what? To validate that password. So the drawback here is that if your on-premise domain controller is down, even though your user have the license, they won't be able to do what? To connect to their cloud resources because your on-premise domain controller is down. However, for the um, password hash synchronization, even if the domain controller server is down, your users can still was um, valid, their, their, their password can still be validated because the hash of that password is actually stored on AD. Now for federated authentication, Azure AD hands off all the authentication process to a trusted authentication system, a separate authentication system actually, um, such as on-premise Active Directory Federation Services. And that is the person that, that is this, um, this guy is actually the one that validates the user's password. Now, what happens is this in this form of authentication method is actually very expensive because what you will want to do most times is to make sure that you have um, you have um, you always have at least um, more than one server um, to do what to ensure that um, you can always have this set of servers that are being that all your authentication process is being proxy to, they are always up. So you need the minimum of four servers here. So one of the things that um, people do not use this authentication method, the federated, is because it's quite very expensive. Imagine you having to spin up four um, servers because you want to be able to um, have a seamless um, authentication process for your users and all of that. So, um, but it offers you the greatest level of security because reason why every authentication process is, will come here, everything passed through here instead. So Azure AD hands it over. Whereas for this, why Microsoft did a bit of this pass through authentication really is because they want to use it to um, be able to work to um I will maybe I use the word alleviate so to say the 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 cost the cost of this federated authentication if you look at password authentication it does what it hands over the authentication method it validates the users di directly with the on-premise so you will see that it is a mini miniature setup of what your federated authentication is actually. The only thing is that um, every validation for your pass-through is coming to your on-premise. And then um, even though you have that password, you have, I mean, Azure, Azure AD has um, a synchronized that user, but then um, you still have words, you still have to pass over that password and verification towards or validation toward to your on-premise server. So these are the three types of um, um, ident ident hybrid identity that you have. So in, um, apart from the cloud um, authentication. 
So moving forward, I think now, so how do you choose the right authentication method? This is a lot of questions that people ask most time. How do we choose the right authentication method? So one of the things you want to do is that if you start from this, let's say this is where you start from. Do you want Azure AD to undo sign it completely in the cloud? If the answer is yes, you find out that then you move to the next place, which means do you want the do you want to enforce user level Active Directory security um, policies during signing? And then if the answer is yes, you move also to what to this. The next question you want to ask is that do you have a single um, requirement non natively support that by Azure AD? If it is yes, you come into here, which means that you can now select any of these methods, whether federation or password. But then, so let's take it one after the other. Mm. So if I say that, um, do I want Azure AD to add your signing completely in the cloud? And my answer is no. What I'm going to the next question, I want to ask myself that do, do I want it to be integrated with an existing federation provider? If the answer is yes, it comes all of this, please, and then come to this, whether I use the federation, I can use um the federation services i talked about or i use federation with password accessing but if i do not want it to have an existing if my answer is no and i just want a signing requirement that supports my um that i mean that is non natively supported by azure ad the next question is that do i want to be able to sign in disaster recovery or leak prediction if my answer is yes, then i do what the pass-through authentication seamless sso with password as seen or i do what my pass-through authentication with with seamless pass-through authentication with seamless sso now if the question i if for this particular place I want to be able to enforce user level authentication and then I'm not also looking at a requirement that supports natively by the Azure AD. All I need to do is just come here and do what my password accessing synchronization. So like I said, Microsoft recommends that you use this password as synchronization for mostly your authentication method. Um, so let's look at how this works. So the first one is Azure AD hybrid identity with password hash synchronization. So you can see that from this is your SaaS solution in Office 365, every of your SaaS solution. So you have um, the same user. This is your Active Directory on-premise. This is your on-premise. This is your cloud. You can see the demarcation. This is the cloud. You have Azure AD that should authenticate any user that wants to access anything in the cloud. Your Azure AD should be the one to authenticate the user. But now with a password hash synchronization, what happens is that the AD Connect is introduced now the AD Connect does what it does what it syncs the password hash to Azure AD. You can see the arrow. It it, the identity sync with password hash is done with what with Azure AD. Now the user is able to sign in anytime. Is able if, if this is a user here, yeah, whether it's remember what we said, depending on whichever location, whether the user is an on-premise or in the cloud and he wants to sign in, the user punches his username and password. And then what happens is that it goes into Azure AD. It sees that the user want to access um, um, the cloud and the cloud um, resources. It allows it to access its SaaS record uh, resources. It, the user also want to go to on-premise. You know, he, he, the user is able to use one single password for both clouds. So you see that this arrow is what bi-directional. It can actually use the same credential to assess the SaaS application and also use the same um, um, user signing to assess the on-premise. So you find out that your user at the same time is keeping just one um, password. Now let's look at the password authentication. So what happens here is this, just the same thing. You have your um, on-premise Active Directory and then on the on-premise Active Directory, you have a pass-through authentication agent that is running on it. So you find that that at the point, um, uh, identity synchronization is done with what with AD Connect. So it syncs everything to Azure AD. Now, when this user wants to access anything on in the cloud, what it does is that you can see the arrow. It comes back 
through what the pass through authentication agent and then to come more to come and validate whether that password that the user is supplying actually exists on on your on-premise ad and then once it checks it then the user can do what assess any of the cloud um, solution so every validation validation is actually done through what on-premise now, when you talk about the hybrid identity with federation authentication, like I said, is actually very, very expensive. If you look at it, remember what I said, I said you need a minimum of four servers. So you need what is called the federation proxy server, and then you need the federation server. So you need two of these. So every time, even though AD Connect does what is called the identity sync, where it syncs the user, but then Azure AD hands over every request of the user. See, the user is here sitting, trying to do what? Trying to assess, but everything is what is taken back to this federation, um, to this federation proxy, which we also proxy the request to this server and then before taking it towards the Active Directory to validate that the user. So it comes back here after it has validated the account and then it comes back here and then the user can do what? Assess the resources. So you find that that is a very, um, a very, um, what they call it, a very expensive way, but yet very secure. It's the most secure way for you to manage your identity and your authentication in an hybrid setup. Now let's look at the difference between the three of them and their pros and cons. Now for password ash, it provides a single a single sign on without additional resources, so you don't need to spin up any other thing. And then um, you also that's for password ash. And then users will be able to sign in if there are issues with on-premise resources. Remember what I said, even if your AD or your domain controller on-premise is down, that doesn't matter, you can continue to sign up. Users have one password to remember for what? Both on-premise and Microsoft Cloud services, so you don't need to remember two different passwords. So the same server that sync user data also sync the password, which minimizes on-premise infrastructure footprint. So what happens is that you do not need multiple servers to be able to do what to do this. You can it can even collocate on your um, domain controller. Um, the AD infrastructure or internet can be done without restricting the ability to log on to Office 365. Remember what I said. So because the part, the hash of your password is stored on Azure AD, you do not. It does not require the um, your domain controller on premise, which is your AD infrastructure on premise, or even it can be done, and then you do not need it. You can always continue to access your resources on an Office 365. So the cons is that since logon terminates in Azure AD, which is very key, this comes out in the exam, where they will ask you for password hash, where does the logon or where does the authentication, who is the identity or authentication provider? Who is your authentication provider? It's actually Azure AD. So since logon terminates in Azure AD, you, you lose the ability to have what? The more granular logon restriction that comes with Active Directory, such as you can restrict the number of logon times for critical business, you know, due to changes in, um, you know, maybe labor regulations and all of that. You can actually restrict it, but with, um, well, that is if you have an active directory that you want, but with Azure AD, you can't do that. Now, self-service password reset for Office 365 account is unavailable without purchasing what the Azure AD Premium. So if I have to do what um, a self-service password, which means I change my password in the cloud and then it does what it reflects for me, it is impossible until I buy this other additional Azure AD Premium or uh, EMS or Enterprise Mobility. One of the things we talked about last week is the different package of the Azure AD also. So we talk about this Azure AD Premium. Now for the pass-through authentication, you can see the pros here. It, it offers you a true single sign-off for domain joint PC and in the web, no password is needed, you understand? So you can actually, so because it's pass-through authentication, your AI, your pieces are what, they are Azure AD joint, so you have a form of hybrid joint, and then your use, your password can, your pieces can join without even you needing your password. 
So you have similar experience to password sync for external no domain join. It is it is built in into Azure AD Connect, which minimizes the infrastructure footprint because everything you're trying to do here, you are actually trying to minimize the number of servers or hardware you will have on premise, and this is a good thing. Also, it 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 also minimizes the infrastructure footprint. You can deploy additional agents for redundancy. So when you do a pass through authentication and then so you want to put your agents you don't want to put your agent on one just one domain controller you want to spread it around so let's say that one domain controller is down so you, the other domain controller can actually validate um your user's password so um that is very important and then one of the cool things you can also do is to make sure that the azure ad also is what is in the, I mean, you have you have your domain controller extended to the cloud. So if you are the type that shuts down your on-premise domain controller, the ones the one on Azure, that's um, infrastructure as a service, can continue to authenticate your user. So you have security requirement that prohibits syncing. Of, some organization have security requirement that prohibits syncing a password. So when you have such scenario. The best method for you to use is the pass-through authentication because yeah, the password is hash, uh, the password hash is synced, but for pass-through authentication, your password hash is not synced. So that's why it is referred to as what pass-through. It's coming directly. So the cons here is that you have to build enough redundancy. I cannot overemphasize that, which means that you have to make sure that you build redundancy with multiple and data center you don't want to keep your domain controllers in this in the same um um what they call it in the same data center and then internet connection also you want to put redundancy into it because your user have to come to your own premise to make controller at every time to do what to validate their password so for federation the pros is that is a full single sign or capability in the web browser and outlook so like I said, it has advanced security configuration and um, is able to filter connection on source IP. So you can actually restrict. You can put more restrictions when it comes to connectivity through specific IP address. There is no need to sync a password hash, so there is no syncing going on yet. Um, it can be re reused with other cloud services that support SAM because this is the authenticator authentication protocol that uh, your federation services. And then it can integrate well with on-premise MFA. So you will have an uh, MFA servers on-premise, which Microsoft also supports. We call it MIM, uh, Microsoft Identity um, Management Server, which is also an MFA. It can also do a, 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 a MFA server. If you want to have MSA on-premise, you can actually integrate with it. Now the cons is that you require you require what additional infrastructure requirement. Like I said, you need a minimum of four server. Um, additional point of failure reason why if you don't have just if you don't have at least a minimum of four servers and you just have to if each of the, each any of those servers are down then your users can authenticate now you have additional costs to set up and then you also need to be able to have what a public certificate on it which has to be another cost entirely now let's now look at the azure ed connect so we've been talking about um ident identity things so we want to talk about what is that tool really that allows all of this synchronization under the roof? So that tool is actually called what well, the Azure AD Connect. So it's a, it's a tool that Microsoft designed to accomplish hybrid identity goals, and it provides you with the following features, password hash synchronization, pass-through authentication, federation integration that we're talking about, synchronization, and then also health monitoring, which means it can help to monitor the identity or of your resources or the identity of your users on the cloud. Now, one of the things you need to have in mind when you are installing Azure AD is that these are the prerequisites. Azure AD must be installed on a domain joined Windows Server 2012 or later. You add, it has to be on a domain joined Windows Server. Now, Azure AD can be installed on a small business server or on a Windows Server essential. These are prerequisites. Um, it must also have a full GUI installed. When we mean GUI, we're talking about um, the graphical user interface. 
So you will want to, it is not, it is not so, when you're installing your AD Connect, you can only install it on a Windows server that has a full graphical user install, in, um, um, interface installed. I don't know whether you've carried out any um, installation on Windows server. You will see that you have the option for you to select the desktop view or you have the option to select the core view. Now, you, um, AD Connect is not supported on Windows Server would call, so you can install it there. Now, the AD Connect also does um, must have uh, must not have PowerShell transcription group policy enabled. So if you do this, um, 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 if you do this, you you might just want to. It may affect the synchronization process. So what you can do is that always enable the PowerShell. So transcription if you use the AD Connect wizard to manage your sync configuration. So another thing is that if ADFS is being deployed, the server where ADFS or web application proxy are installed must be enabled on, um, you must, uh, Windows Remote Management, I mean, must be enabled on all of these servers, wherever you install your ADFS and you want to use what you want to, and, and I mean, and you want to use AD Connect with it. You must also configure this protocol, this security protocol. So you have TSS or SSL certificate because you must have a third party certificate that must be trusted by Azure AD. And then you must also configure a name resolution. So if, you, if you're a global administrator, um, you can enable the MFA. This is just, by the way, this is just um, talking about um, this, uh, about MFA. Um, how you can enable it. So, um, Azure AD, the supported topologies, now it supports a single forest and a single AD tenant. So, um, what this means is this, this is my Active Directory on-premise is a single forest, and then this is what my um, Azure AD. Now, the most common topology which you have for AD Connect is actually the single on-premise forest, which is this method. Um, for Azure AD authentication, password asynchronization is used, and then the express installation is also used. Now, another method that AD Connect can support is multiple forest single Azure AD. Now, when you talk about multiple forest, so you can have abc.com, xyz.com, um, e and def.com. This, these are all on premise and they are different forests on premise. And if you know, a forest is always represented by what a triangle. This is your domain, your own on premise. So, and then you have just one Azure AD. So, you can actually put one single AD connect that can actually do what? Synchronize with all of these different forests. So, many organizations that have environments with multiple on premise Active Directory can do what? Can, um, this is a typical example where you can do what? You can sync as many of the users in each of these forests to Azure AD. So this is applicable maybe like a bank environment, acquire another bank, or you know when you have an acquisition or a merger in place, so you can do all of this. So this Azure AD can be responsible for each of these forests and sync it to the cloud. Now you have the Azure AD, another, I mean, multiple Azure AD tenants. So you can actually have a situation where you have two different forests, I mean, to, on, um, on your on-premise, so you might have these, um, forest, maybe you acquire, and then each of them will go to um, a different AD, um, what they call it also, um, AD, um, Azure AD tenant. So in this topology, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between an Azure AD Connect Sync server and, and then the Azure AD tenant. So for each Azure AD tenant, you need one Azure AD um, Connect. So let's assume that even you as an organization, you have more than one tenant. Right now, the Office 365 you have right now is just one tenant. But if you have more than one tenant, you might want to consider um, an Azure AD connect for each tenant. So, um, and then this is what it is. So you have this other method where you have also, um, you have it in multiple tenants. You have this forest, but you have different domains, you know, and then you can sync, sync, so you can sync to it also. So, um, 
the unsupported topology is single forex, multiple sync servers. So in a way where you have um, having multiple AD connect sync server connected to the same Azure AD tenant is not supported except for a staging server. So you cannot have it is not supported for you to have a single forex and then you have multiple AD connect server. I don't know, but you can have um, it's you 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 um. You can have um, what they call it. You can have one one Azure M one um, Azure AD tenant, and then you can also have um, um, just you can just have one AD connect connect to it. But in this is what they're saying is that if you you can have multiple AD connect sync server connected to the same Azure AD. So I cannot have an AD connect maybe in. In a company A, company B, company C, and then they are all syncing toward the same major AD and with the same domain name is not possible. So you can also have multiple forest single sync server to one Azure AD. So this is unsupported. Having more than one AD connect sync server connected to a single Azure AD tenant is not supported. The exception is if you are using a staging server. A staging server means it is not what it is not active. Then you also have each object multiple times in an Azure AD. So you can't have that. Unsupported task is that you can't sync the same user to multiple AD tenants. It will give you an error. Um, you can make a configuration change, make a configuration so that user in one Azure AD tenant appear as contact is an Azure AD tenant, it is not possible. Um, modify Azure AD connect things to connect to multiple Azure AD tenant is also not possible. So why we before we take our, our question, so uh, let's look at what we've done. Um, I'm just going to try to take us through now um, what we have before setup. So let's look at our Oh, shit. Uh, um, did I close it? Oh, shit. OK, so I think I closed that. Um, so I'm going to have to open it back. Um, so I want to log in real fast to my to our environment that we have. I didn't know that I was close. But do you have any questions, Sarah, at this point? I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not, um, so is it just practice to have a hybrid solution now for Active Directory, or is it becoming more popular to keep everything on the cloud? Okay, so it depends on you. Um, this question was asked last week by someone. Mm. So one of the things you want to bear in mind is that um, yes, it's it's um, it's becoming more practice now to put everything on premise, and then um, so it's actually your business needs. And then when you look at the environment right now, probably maybe by take Nigeria as an example. We have power issue. We look at all of those things, and the, a lot of people have been very um, low footprint on premise right now. They're taking it to the cloud. So your Active Directory, you can have it. Now, one of the things a lot of organizations are also looking at, even if I have an hybrid setup, why don't I have an hybrid setup with my domain controller in infrastructure as a service in the cloud, which means I have infrastructure as a service on Azure, and I spin up a VM that is called my um, domain controller, and then and then I have an hybrid with it because one of the things people still keep um, a domain an active directory on premise for is because like you see where we talked about having more granular um, having to be able to create more granular policies around password uh, around users and then if you're such that do a lot of group policy settings now you Azure AD won't offer you those policy test settings, even to, even if it is done via Intune. Intune will not give you a lot of policy group policy settings like what Azure, I mean your on-premise AD will give you. So some people most times will mostly want to maintain 
their on-premise Active Directory and then rather just do hybrid with, I mean, I mean, hybrid with it. But when they're doing hybrid, another thing that comes to mind is that, okay, why do I still want to keep anything on-premise? Can I migrate my AD on-premise to Azure? So, like I told people the last time, I said one of the things we normally miss up is we are always missing up Azure AD to be the same thing as Microsoft Azure. Azure is a platform, is a cloud platform where you can have infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, you can have all of those resources. Meanwhile, Azure AD is an authentication, an identity provider or something that authenticates you while you are assessing anything on on in the cloud in microsoft cloud and then it's sitting on azure so just like everything you assess today even if it is google requires an identity provider so you look at azure ad in that same sense it is not the same thing as microsoft azure azure is a platform so people may decide to now move their workloads to azure and do what is called an hybrid with that instead so I don't know if that helps you. Yeah, that helps a lot. I was kind of confused between them both coming together. Yes, yes. I know a lot of people get confused with that. So last week I tried as much as possible to explain the difference between Microsoft Azure and then the Azure ED. Um, so that that's it. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. OK, so right now I'm going to be showing you. So um, we set up this this uh, last week. Um, and then one of the things, so because this is recorded and then some of them that were last were here last week, we also want to see. So I can actually tell them. Now, when we've set up our VMs, one of the things you want to do is that you might also want to give your VM a static IP address. So for me, what you will go and do is that this is your VM, which is the properties of your VM. You need to go to networking. And when you go to networking, you also need to do what? Get the network interface. Now, this is for me, the network interface. Now, you can now decide to what? Assign an IP address, a static IP address for your domain controller because you don't want it to carry a public IP address. So for me, my private, so you come into this place um, in IP configuration, you click on this IP configuration and then on IP configuration, once it loads, you will see where you can set your private IP. Now, when you go to where you can set your private IP, it's always dynamic. By default, is always on what dynamic assignment, so it is dynamically assigned. But so what you will do is this: you will change it here and put it to what you, you change it to static. So this become it does not change all the time, and then you can give your domain controller a static IP address. So I have done this, and then I can move back also to what to the IP config, and then the DNS also. I can set a custom DNS. By default, what you have when you set it up is that it's going to inherit from your what virtual network, so it's going to inherit the public DNS. So one, this may affect name resolution. Remember what we said our domain controller also does is also what a DNS server, so which means it's also doing what a name resolution. Now these are just the things you need to set up, and once you set this up, um, after your domain controller has been, then I can now do what I can connect to my AD. Now I want to connect and then it gives me the option for me to connect via RDP and then that is always um, um, how will I put it? That is always um, you can always download it and when that's downloaded you can actually connect to it. So I'm going to connect to that real fast and I'm going to bring that here. It's going to bring this for me. So I need to connect to a public um, a public IP quite all right, fine. But then let's look at the other account I can use. This is the so the account we use is 3M spaces 5, M365 admin. And then I think the password we use was. So um, this is me. So that's my domain controller. Um, 
this is my domain controller here. Um, so remember, we've we promoted this to a domain controller last week. Um, so I'm waiting for it to load. Okay, now if you look at um, the first thing you will be introduced to will be what um, with the, your server manager, which we spoke about um, last week. And then the server manager is actually just from the word manager. So it's what is like a console that manages, that allows you to carry out a management activity on your server, really. So if you look at this right now, if you want to configure your local server, you can decide this is where you, yes, you can give it a name, you can, you know, it's domain join and all of these, you know, these are some of the, um, the things they have. Um, you can look at the IP address and all of that. So um, the next thing I want to do is um, after I've done this, I can come to my tools. When I used to, when I promoted this domain control, when I promoted it to a domain controller, this snap scene are part of the snap scene that it introduced. I mean, it brought up. So I'm going to, what really concerns me is the Active Directory users and computer snaps in. So I'm going to look at that. So I created the same kind of domain. Uh, you can see I do not have any user created there except default users that are created on premise, you know, that are built in users and also the accounts that are used in installing. So we're going to be looking at how we'll create few users and then sync it to the cloud. So beyond that, another thing you want to be bothered about is your DNS. Now for DNS, we found that, that our DNS also, which is what is responsible for name resolution, also carry the name. You know, so we have by default two lookup zone. We have the forward lookup zone and then the reverse lookup zone. So the forward lookup zone is what translates um, your name to IP address, while the reverse lookup zone does the the other way around. So what we'll also do is that the default lookup zone is what is there by default. So I need to create a, a reverse lookup zone. So when I create a reverse lookup zone, it's going to I'm going to do what is called a primary, and then um, I'll leave this to be the default to all the NS servers running on the domain controller. It also should be IP version four reverse lookup zone, and then so you find that that this is actually doing what taking the network ID. So here we have a network ID of ten dot. 10.0, which is my, I mean 10.0.0. That's my network ID. So that's what 10.0.0. So you can see that, like we said, the reverse, it will identify the IP address and then do what is called resolve it to name. That's why it's reverse proxy. So I mean, result, reverse lookup zone, sorry. Um, and then you can allow, and then you have this. So I have this. So this is taking the name. So this does resolution of this name to IP address. While this does resolution of what um, IP address to the name. So it's just your reverse. So we've done that. Um, great. So while this is set up, the next thing I want to do is that I want to go to my Active Directory and then just create an organization. So you remember what I said about, I don't want to digress so much from this course, but I just want you to know that you can actually create what is called an organization unit. So an organization unit old is like a container that owns, um, you use it to work old specific information about users in your environment. So it might be so that you can apply specific policies to them. So so it's a way of organizing your environment. So if I, I can create an organization unit for each department, so all the users in that department belongs to that organization unit. So I can create um, organization unit per department. So let's say this is um, um, information technology. I'll just do that as an example. Information technology. This is my organization unit. So the, the very first organization unit you create is referred to as what the parent organization unit. Now I can decide to create a sub organization unit to structure my environment and call it what IT users. This is the way I like to structure environment. I can create another one and call it what 
um, IT computers, that is every computers of everyone in IT should be joined to this, should be moved to this place. So I'm just digressing a bit just to see how, just to show you guys how you can do this to keep your environment. I can also do this, I can create um, um, another organization unit and call it what IT groups. So whatever groups that um, is pertaining to IT or probably maybe any, whether it's service or distribution group, that's where I'll create it. So let's quickly work on this. Let's create a few user. Now the user, the way you create users in, um, in um, Office 365 or on-premise are almost the same. You can give the person the same, um, what they call it. So I'm going to use you, Sarah, as my example. And then I'm going to call your last name, Dancy. Um, though I don't know your last name, but I guess I'm just going to do that. Um, and then use the user logon name to be Sarah B. Now, one of the things I need to be sure ahead of time is to be sure that there is nobody in my Active Directory that is, I mean, in my Azure AD bearing Sarah. Because if I do have, not that it can, I can do what is called, um, um, what they call it, markings, I mean, SMTP matching, or um, I can do all of that, but we're not going to go into that. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to scatter, I don't want to, I don't want to give you so much so that at the end of the day, so this is Sarah, and then I can set a password for Sarah. Um, and then that's it. So I have this. So let's create another user. Let's create one more user so that we know that these users are the one we want to sync from on-premise. So I have another user, and that user is... Um, let me call the user um, your turn. Okay. So and then the username is up your turn A. You know, that's the convention I'm using. Um and then I do not want this user to change password. So let's say these two users is who I just created. And then you know oh you can create as, as many users as possible if you want to. If you want, what's happening? It's happening with a password. The last time, didn't do that again. Okay, great. So I'm just going to have these two users. And then let me be sure that I don't have a Sarah B in my in my on-premise, I mean the cloud, sorry. Uh, so all the cloud users have created before now, so there is no Sarah, good. Okay, so um, remember what we said, looking at this sync status, everyone is what in the cloud. So let's see how we're gonna um, deal with that now. So the, easy, the easiest way for you to do it actually is either you download it too, or you come into this same place on your AD because in my own case, I want to use the same server that I'm using as my domain controller to be my AD Connect server. So all I can do here is I can come to open my portal.office.com again. Let's see, portal.office.com um, and then enter it. This is my AD. So let's make sure that OK is off. Um, and then I sign in with the same in tsm and Microsoft. This 
this is actually the easiest way for you to do it. If you come into this place, you know, you are on your Office 365. So you sign into your Office 365 on your um, on the server you want to use as your what as your AD connect. In my own case, because of um, this is a test environment, although, although even in a production environment it is supported, you can actually have your AD connect on the same server as your AD. Maybe the only thing you just want to do is to define the traffic, you know, so you will because now it means your AD will be internet facing, but then what kind of traffic do you want it to be able to see on the internet? That's the only thing you might want to be concerned about. So um, with that said, so I'll go to users again, um, my active users. Now you will see these three dots here. Just click on the three dots and then you will see directory synchronization. Now, when you see this directory synchronization, it will tell you that go to the download center to get the AD Connect. So when you go there, you're going to download that. And then when you download it, we should just open in a few seconds. No, that doesn't mean that with Google you cannot download. You can actually download it, you know. Then let me accept all of these cookies and then um, now when it is downloaded the download is complete what you can do is that you can run your ad connect now the installation process is very very simple it's very straightforward maybe it's just a configuration we're not going to see and then we're going to see how that works so Now, see that it's installed. So the next thing is that once this is once this is finished, it's going to bring up this and it's going to say yes. You want to agree? Um, Sarah, are you still there with me? Yeah, I'm here. OK, very good. So you say yes, welcome. So you agree and then you continue. Now, when you continue, it's going to, you can use the express settings. This is the simplest way. So you just use the express settings and it's going to do what? It's going to start, it's going to ask you what you choose. So the first thing is it asks, connect to your Azure AD. So I, it wants to be able to connect to your Azure AD. So in this case, I'm going to supply my Azure AD um, username, which is still the admin. Um, and then the password so then with this it's going to continue so it's going to try to connect to my azure ad mostly like connecting to my azure ad and once it's that one is it established that connection the next thing is going to ask me is to work enter my own premise active directory so for my own premise i use this account um at me so uh, most times you want to use your net bios name which is winter slash this that's why i drew that then i'm going to put my password also and then it's going to i'm it's going to try to connect to it so which is connected so it sees it can see that my active directory upn on premise is what remember what we also did was well, this is my UPN on premise, which is wintest.com.ng. So for some organization, they might want to do what um, um, do what maintain the same um, domain name both in the cloud and on premise. In my case, I made it simple to do that, but it's not an issue if you do not have the same. So it, that my and then it also says that my Azure AD configuration is what is verified so i'm going to move on and then it's going to do the installation and then if i say start synchronization so be always careful when you see this if you do not check this box everything here whether you need it or not and if you have not done your user education so to say 
So everything, it will come into your wintest.com.ngn and then sync every of the components here. But if you have not done a user, you know, some users um, um, education is required. So what you would do is that make sure that when it's installing, when you get to this point, you don't say start the synchronization. You would rather start it manually. So you, you see it says synchronization will be disabled. Your Active Directory Forest will not be synchronized with as your own T synchronization is enabled, which is what is better. So or else it will sync both the things you want and you don't want. So and I'll show you how you can do all of those. So it's going to install a local a SQL Server Express. It's going to um, a local DB on your server. It's going to install that. And when that installation ends, um, we'll see what will happen. Um, it's going to configure the client also. And then, um, so the synchronization services is also installing the synchronization services. So all of this that we have done right now is just the express installation. So we'll, we'll see how we can configure it. Because when we were about to configure it, that's when we will be seeing um, the the kind of um, the kind of um, authentication method we want to use. I have any question at this time why this is going on? I may want to have it. I'm good. All right, that's great. Hello, I have a question. Is it lie? I thought it was it was um Sarah Ilo, I have here. You guys have come back, you? you guys <laughs> abandoned because I have internet issue. Uh it's no good though. All right, I'm here. I'm all yes. Okay, so um, my question is um, if um, to understand what we did today is to um, migrate the Sarah and um, Abiodun we created to the Office 365 we have created already. Yes, that's what we want to do. We have okay, not well, migrated I yet. Okay. We have not, not migrated. Let me use the right word, synchronize the identity. Okay. Synchronizing the identity. Okay. Yes. So I don't know whether you were here when I said I did, um, I completed, um, I don't know when you joined us again, um, because it happens to be that it was only Sarah that was here with me. So that way we spoke about the different kinds of um, the password as synchronization, the pass through, the federation, the synchronization, and then um, um, talking about the pros and cons when you need boots and when you do not need and all of that. So I do not know whether you're here with me then. Yeah, I was coming off and on. I think what I need to do is maybe after the class, I need to go back to the videos and walk through again. Maybe if I have a question, I'll raise it that on the Teams channel. Okay. All right, that would be great. So you see that uh, I would have wanted you to see. So you see that it's enabled. Um, it enabled the express installation is very easy to do. Um, it's very straightforward. Is but um, if you want to learn, you can actually do the customize, which will give you the opportunity for you to be able to select. Because by default, when you when you enable the express installation, like I did, it will install the um what they call it for you it will install um the password as synchronization for you is what so we can actually go to see how you can um, do the how i can do a, a customize of what has already been installed um initially and then we'll now look at if you want to pick any other settings to it you can get that so um Let's just allow this to go through. OK, so if if it permits me, were you here um, a year when I was showing you how you can give your AD? Oh, yeah, you were here last week, right? 
Yes, I was. Okay. Um, did you set up your domain controller? Yes, I did. Okay. What about were you here when I was saying how you can give your domain controller a static IP address instead? Yes. How you yes. Can switch it? Okay. All right. So that is very important. So you can see the the stuff is is um um. Active Directory Recycle Bin is not enabled for your forest. It's actually very important. You know what the Active Directory Recycle Bin is. If you delete a user, you can actually, with this Recycle Bin, you can actually go to re uh, restore it. Um, synchronization is currently disabled. Yes, I disable it because I don't want. Um, it's configured to use this. Um, it's, um, it's configured to use AD attribute as the source as the source and core attributes. So those are just the information. So I can exit this. So what I'm going to do is this. Now it creates this. Now let's assume that I have, I just want to show you, I have another configuration I want to do with AD Connect. So I'm going to show you what it is like. So you see configure. Now, um, these are the things I have here. I can look at, um, privacy or customize my synchronization option. I can customize my device option. I can customize. So if I had done um, what they call it for you, if I have done the express would take password synchronization, password hash synchronization automatically. That's why it's the simplest. But let's say I want to customize my configuration and my synchronization option. You will see even when I have installed my password, let me let me see. Um, um, let me show. Let me see if I can show you that. Although I'm not going to start anything there. Um, now I also have my Active Directory. So here is where you can actually select your domain and all you featuring. Which of them do you want it to sync? So you remember that if you look at it, sync all domains and OU. No. So that's why we call it what domain and OU featuring. I do not want it to. So I'm going to select this and then I scroll down. I cannot check this. And then now come to that domain that I created. I mean, that organization that I created, organization OU. And just select my IT users. These are the only thing. If I want to synchronize their computers also, because you can actually do that also, I can do that. So I'll just select this IT user, click next. And then now this is where I want us to get. This is actually what I want us to get to. So now you can see the different times, types of um, synchronization option you have. Now, cool thing is this. Like I said, when you do the express password as synchronization is what is selected by default. Now I can decide also to say I want to have a password hash back or a right back. But if you do, if you don't want to use the express, it will it will walk you through selecting the option you want to use. Now because I selected password as synchronization and it has not detected any exchange in my environment, this is not. Um, it's not is is grayed out. Um, I or well, the most I can do is I can do what I can have what directory um, and password right back. I can do directory extension attributes which and then if you want to find out what that means when you enable this uh, custom directory attributes you specify will be synchronized. Probably maybe I have specific attributes and you know for every user account you create on the network your attributes are actually like their features. So let's look at this user now that I created initially. What are these users attributes? So what are the users attributes? Is attributes he has what? He has a first name, he has a last name, he has a Display name, he has an email address, he has a telephone number, he has um, a logon name, he has um, an organization he belongs to, and then you can drill it more if you want to know the different kinds of attributes. Let me digress a bit. You see on your Active Directory when you come to view, you come to advanced features. So by the time you see now when I introduce advanced features, more things came out. So if I go back to that same user that I was checking the other time, 
And let's check what is attribute. You will see now that I have something for what attributes editor. So these are all the attributes of the users. You know, you can pick attributes here. This is where you select the one for what the UPN, you know. So you can actually select attributes for what UPN, which is what your user principal name. So the user principal name is going to be the person's name at the domain surface that's what is the user principal name so like i said there might be some environment instead of this winters.com.ng that is the same thing as what i have on office 365 their own ad may be winters.local that is not an issue all you need to come and do in such cases is this is for you to come to your tools and come to domain and trust um you see it's only string and then add another word you can actually what um come to properties and then add an alternate UPN surface. So if this is dot local, but I know that winters.com.engine is what eventually my users, I want them to be able to use because dot local is not a what a routable domain. It is local. So when you see things like winters.com.engine, those are routable domain. .net is a routable domain. Those are routable. So you can add it here instead. I'm just giving that as a digression. So in, in a case where you have an on-premise um, domain that is what, um, that is um, not a routable domain like this is dot local instead and what you know routable domain is what you can use on office 365 and that's what he, he can recognize you can come and add it under your what your active directory domain and trust so all you need to do is just like i said come to properties and then add alternate um, to, um upn so if i add this now and i could say let's say ap abc.com I'm saying that is an alternate domain. You will now see what's going to happen at the point where I have this users, um, this um, particular user. You can see the option for me now that when it comes to account, I can actually drop down and see AD connect, AD at abc.com. This is pretty simple, you know. So you use this to correct, especially when you have a local. So that's just a bit of digression there. Um, and I hope that's useful for you in, in, in case you find yourself in an environment where um, they are not using a routable domain. So I don't need this. I'm just going to remove it um, and then I'm fine. So um, with that, you know, I can do this if I want to enable some additional um, attributes, but I don't need that. So I can just uh, check it and then just allow my password right back and then configure it. And then that's all. But if you go through the, um, if you go through the, other routes, you can actually see this. So I can now start my synchronization because I have done what? Remember, I've come to this domain. Domain. Um, so let's go back. I've come to this domain filtering and I've checked. So for every um, for every OU that you want to sync your user, maybe for every department, if you have it structured this way, all you just need is just to go and select the users there. And then, so let's see what will happen now that we've already and i said it should what it should synchronize the user so we have our at um, azure ed readily available um and i say start synchronization so let's see what's going to happen um well it's as, it's as easy as that okay um do i have my admin center again So let's see what's happening. Okay. Okay, great. So you see, it says that what you just notice that this on-premise directory synchronization was introduced after you have done this. So if I refresh this, I may not see the user yet, which means it is still. So I need to go back to my on-premise. And then what you will see is that for you to be able to assess your AD Connect, you need to come in here into your PC. 
um, it's in program files, and then you need to come into your Azure AD Active Directory, and then you are going to look for this um, Let's look for these. So let's see. No, um, this is. Um, I'm looking for MS clients. Let me just do your MS clients. So, actually, I'm using Bing. This is the same one we have on premise. I mean, in on the desktop, I guess it's the same one. So um, I want to. I'm, I'm looking for the synchronization client. That's what I want to bring up because um, I want us to show. I want to show you how you run the command manually in case you do this. So, just one minute, please. Mm. Although I have it synchronized, but then Sarah Benson is there. So you see, so what you have here is Sarah Benson but then it is not a sync identity because the synchronization is still ongoing. It has always it has only brought it with Abiodun. So when you see they are still in the cloud, so they have not synchronized so yet. And then it's still ongoing. But I need to bring up the client. Okay, see what I'm looking for. So this is it. This is the MSI client. So um, when you finish your installation, it's very important. So you have to come to prog programs and program files and you come to edit this thing. So you have to bring this this item out. So we are sending it to desktop because that's where you that's what you use most times for your Let me delete this, one of these. So this is what your synchronization services look like. So if you look at it, you see that the connectors that it created for you. So two things are created. You will see the own Microsoft connector, which is what is added. This is your Azure AD, and then this is your what your on-premise domain, which is what? The winters.com.in, which is Active Directory. So you can see the tab that this is Window Azure Active Directory. So these two connectors are created. Now, at every time when there is a synchronization going on, you can actually see it. So once the synchronization, you will see when an object has been um, installed. I mean, that an object has been what has been exported, and then if it is successful, you will see the ads here, and then you will see the ads when you click on it, you can actually see the property of them that, okay, this is Sarah Bessie that is being worked on and all of that. So um, then the other one should be a building, you know, you can see the properties. And when you want to look, um, today, I, I don't think I want to 
put you through today where you, how you can get to know the changes that has been done for each of those users. This looks very tiny. Let me see if I can, I can increase the, the, my view for you. You just have to manage this. I'm trying to see if I can increase it, but it's not. So, um, so what we're going to do now is that let's bring up our PowerShell and just run a bit of commands um, on our PowerShell. Um, our internet is dragging once again. You have run as administrator. That's some of it. So one of the things you want to do is that, yes, I already have that, but when you want to run the command, you want to do this first. You want to import this module. So it's saying that it's not recognized, it's not valid because it, it is not. So it's either that it's already it's already there, um, or I want to install the module. So when it says it is not, let's see if we can install the module um, and then I'll call it AD Sync. Let's see what we'll get. Okay, so I'm gonna try to say yes to all, which is why. And let's see, so it's given an error, unable to download these, these, unable to download these, these, check your internet connection. Why not? My DNS, is that the issue? Hmm. Shouldn't be an issue. So let's see this. Um, let's look at the Internet Explorer. Let's look at the settings and needs. And look at tools, Internet options, security, custom level. Let me see. Download is enabled. Yes, my file download is enabled. So it's not an issue. So you get this error. It may not be imported, but I tried to import it, so that's an error. But let's see if probably maybe I run the get ad sync. Let me see what you give me. So because I need to install the module and it's not allowing me. Mm. So let's see if I can use the PowerShell that comes with it. Remember, you're showing us some tools then. Uh, Azure ED PowerShell. So, um, this is going to install some of the libraries. Um, so I'm going to copy this. Sorry. Um, I'm going to change my directory to this part. And then see. Yeah. 
Remember what I taught you guys about PowerShell, that when you're running a PowerShell and the PowerShell is showing a red sign, yeah, it means that there's something wrong with your command. So because I have space in here, that's why. So, um, so I want to change to that directory. So I have to put it in the quotes. Now, putting it in a put now, I can now run my command. Let's see if I can install what the Azure AD command we do. Azure AD.ps. What is the name? Okay. So what's the command doing? Because I need to import. So, um, I think it's one of those things. Um, I, I want I want to show you how to run it from the. I want to show you how to run it from the. Um, from the command line, that's the thing. I want to show you how to run because I, I can actually do this. I can actually come here and then do from the connectors. I do, I have the option of um, of um, running it, of syncing and then running, you know. I have the connection of doing a full import, a full synchronization. So if I do a full synchronization, I have the option of doing it, but if I do that, I want to show you from the command, but I think there's something wrong with the PowerShell. I think there is a restriction on my PowerShell, maybe because I'm running from, I'm running, okay, I should have known better. I think because I'm running a PowerShell also on um, Azure, from, uh, um, the VM I'm using is on Azure. That's the problem right now. So I'll see how to um, enable me, for me to be able to run a PowerShell, because the VM I'm using is from Azure. So, I would need to look through this error and then maybe work with you next week so that I don't waste some of your time. But now, what you can see is that if you look at the operations, you will see that the full synchronization is going on. And then it will tell you how many objects really is about to um, um, synchronize, which is still the same, Sarah. And then you can tell you. So we will see when we make a change to Sarah's um, name, and we will see what will happen. You know. So let's see if that synchronization has finished, and then we can see whether Sarah is. The idea is that they're supposed to change to. I'm supposed to have the icon change. Let me see whether it's different here. Okay. okay, so I have that. So let me see. It says success, but what I do not have is that it only says success. The operation is only saying export. It's only saying this. So let's go back. So let me sync this. Um, so on premise, we want it. Full imports.
So what I want you to do is that though the user is synchronized, but they are still showing them as cloud only. That's the problem I'm having here. I want it rather to show it as a synchronized identity, except it's telling me the synchronized is still on is still ongoing. Uh, except that's the only thing. Supposed to show me. And this also has finished. This operation is finished. This shows it is successful because I have this ad. So this ad shows they are in the cloud. Um, except it's just um, an update thing, maybe. I want my sync site to do is my directory synchronization. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave it like this because, to be honest, there is no there's no reason why it can it shouldn't show synchronized. I mean, it's it's ended. So I'm just going to leave it, and then maybe hopefully next week, probably maybe it's just still doing some things in the background. Why it's not showing this, and then it's not showing the synchronized icon is um, is the reason. But like we see, it has already brought in the user here, and then we're just waiting for it to show the um, synchronized icon, which I'm not seeing. But I don't see that so much as a problem because I want to believe that maybe the operation is going on in the background. So um, with that, I think I'm going to end because I need to have spent more than um, one hour. Let me know if you have any questions so I can take. And then from there, we can um, look at that next week. So if, if by next week this doesn't show, I mean, during the weekend, then I know it's an issue, but then I don't see that as much as of an issue really because I know eventually it's going to show. Um, so any question from any of you? Oh, I'm happy. You said? Sorry, I'm just saying Sorry, I'm, I'm happy. Saying. Oh, okay. All right then. That's great. Not from my end. All right, that's great. I think uh, with this, we'll come to the end. So definitely, I know by now you guys should be doing yours, how to synchronize your users and also do the rest. Maybe next week, you, if we have the time, you guys can show me what you have done. Um, Sarah, you have a lot to catch up with, so you can also see where you can watch the other videos and see where we stop so that you can take, you can go on from there. Yeah, I'll do that. All right then. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for the time. I really need to rush out because I'm supposed to be somewhere. Um, so, um, yes, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, bye.